G'day YouTube, I'm Ben. Today we're going to learn to do this. This is a Balearic sling, named after the famed Greek mercenaries from the Balearic Islands. It's an ancient weapon. Let's look at the history a little bit more. Today we're talking slings, shepherd slings or Balearic slings. So let's break this down. The purpose of these slings was partly to do with recreation. It's a bit of a, you know, a bit of a skill that people can learn and compete with. Also, it's a weapon of warfare. It's also used for herding animals and it's also used for scaring off pests and that kind of thing. And obviously it's used for hunting. The materials that these things were made from varied from flax, wool, hemp, from rushes and obviously also leather as well. We know that these have been around since probably the Paleolithic Stone Age and they're generally considered to be a low status weapon. Interestingly though, the ones that have been found from antiquity tend to be from reasonably high status graves. There's one also in Norway, there's a couple in Egypt and Africa, that kind of thing. So very interesting there. And I think that leads back to it being a skill that people were able to demonstrate and use and also a means of hunting. We see them represented in art in places like Syria, in the Romans and the Greeks. Interestingly, you also see them on the Bayeux Tapestry about the Norman Conquest of 1066. Interestingly, Homer talks about these being used by the Greeks, Romans, Iberians, Gauls, and of course, Arabs. Livia talks about them being used by people from the Balearic Islands who were mercenaries to both the Carthaginians and also the Romans. Vegetius talks about slings causing more annoyance to his troops than arrows from the enemy. Ammunition was sometimes cast lead or clay and these were interestingly had a small hole in them which would make a shrieking sound as they came towards you. Uh, similar I guess in the terms of what the Germans used with the Stuka aircraft of the Second World War caused a lot of fear in the troops as you knew this thing was coming. Obviously they could also use stones as well. In the Bible of course we hear about them being used with the battle of David and Goliath as well as other areas in the Bible. The advantage of a sling of course is that it's light, it's easier to carry, it's probably easy, easy to conceal if you're going to use it in asymmetric warfare. And obviously ammunition can be available just about anywhere. What's really remarkable about this is it's such a non-specialist thing. It's so easy to learn. As I say, ammunition's available anywhere. When you compare it to archery, which was actually quite a specialist sort of activity, and to create a really good warrior archer, as the English found, you really needed to start with a grandfather. This was a multi-generational learning curve to create really uh, strong lines of archers. It required a strong supply chain, not only the bow, the bowstring, the arrows themselves, the warheads for the arrows and the fletching. So many different disciplines there which all required a degree of specialist skill. And obviously specialist tools to make uh, and knowledge as opposed to a sling which really didn't require any of that. Slings had a range of up to about 400 meters and there are reports of the lead melting through the passage of air as it comes in towards its target and even penetrating the armor of the victim. These are really quite interesting statistics when you compare it to archery we really couldn't compete with the arrow uh, penetrating specialist armor at long range like that. According to Precipius, the sling had a longer range than the Hun bow and arrow. Alrighty, let's look at how to make one of these things and then we'll have a look at how to use them. The pouch is very easy to construct. It consists of three parts. 
There are two strings of equal lengths. One has a cord at the end, the other a knot and a simple leather pouch. I made mine from scrap leather. There are many ways that you can make a pouch for such a sling. It has an even number of holes in it and tied off with a fisherman's knot. The cords I use are approximately 70 to 80 centimeters long. Longer cords will have a longer range, shorter cords will have more accuracy. The technique is very simple. Hold your fingers like this. The loop goes on the middle finger and stays there. The knot is pinched between the finger and thumb. The basic technique is really simple. Focus on the target and we simply, in an underarm motion, rotate the sling. Notice I'm only using my wrist, not my whole arm, not even my elbow, just my wrist. Let's get used to that motion just for a moment. It doesn't need to be fast, it just needs to be getting the technique right. So simple underarm motion. As the ball comes towards my right foot, I release from the thumb and forefinger. Don't worry, it won't go very far. Once you have mastered the basic skill and can maintain a reasonable level of accuracy, move on to the second stage. In the second stage, again, very simple. The target to my left, the right of screen. My foot 90 degrees to the target. Bend the knee slightly, lean back. Now, I'm moving my hand slightly away to allow a slightly greater momentum. Eyes on target and release. The third stage is to put some real effort into it. Same as before, target to my left. I'm right arm dominant, so left hand is of course, just reverse everything I say. Knee slightly bent, right foot 90 degrees to the target. Underarm motion, pull out back, and then put some real zing into it. Alrighty guys, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe and share and I'll catch you in my next video.